Well, thank everybody for showing up. I think a lot of you are here because we are in a very tough market for our, our sector, but this is when fortunes are made. You think back to 2007, 2008, if you had the opportunity to buy Bank of America at a dollar or Citigroup at two dollars, I'm sure we all would have made that trade. I think in our sector, we're in that same um, uh, downturn, but I think we've more or less leveled out. You're seeing a lot of upside now coming into a lot of the gold producers. You're starting to see it now coming into uh, the junior space as well. And I think Cordoba is very well positioned to take advantage of a rising market. Uh, Cordoba is a fairly new story. We went public in March of last year. Uh, we raised about $15 million with some of the largest funds. At a dollar share, we had BlackRock, the world's largest uh, fund, come into the stock. We had Geologic come in, uh, Continental Gold, which is also speaking right after us, uh, came into the stock. Uh, RBC came into the stock, and over the last eight months, I say our stock went from a dollar down to 10 cents, and a lot of that has to do with the downturn. Now, unfortunately, when you have a few sellers and no buyers, uh, that's the kind of environment we're in. But I think what we have here at Cordoba is a very special story. At the management team, I'm the CEO. I've raised over $650 million in my career. In two companies, I went from exploration to commercial production. I have Chris Granger, who is an Australian, has been in South America for the last uh, 10 years, has, has uh, helped discover Beritica, which is Continental Gold's project. Ari, Ari Sussman, who is the CEO of Continental, is our chairman uh, of the board. We also have David Redding, who's credited for finding a lot of Rangold's assets. He agreed to join our board. And Bill Orchow, who I'll highlight as well, is the former CEO of uh, Rio Tinto's assets in, in the U.S., uh, Kennecott. So we've got a tremendous board, strong management team, and we still have capital. With that $15 million that we raised, uh, we've done an exploration program, which I'll walk you through. We still have $3 million in the Treasury today, even after making the various uh, payments to landowners to consolidate this ground. You can see the outcrop there of uh, the copper that we discovered. So Columbia, for those of you that are not familiar in Colum of Columbia, the mid Belt has had well over 50 million ounces of gold discovered to date. Beritica, which is on the northern end of the uh, belt, will be developed. It's a high-grade underground uh, mine. The rest of the assets are quite difficult. They're one gram gold equivalent, some less. Uh, they're at 15 to 3,000 meter elevation. Very difficult. La Colosa is probably the largest discovery so far in that mid Belt. They have almost 30 million ounces of gold. But again, it's Pasqualama II, massive CapEx project to get that into production, and it is one gram gold at uh, 2,500 meter type elevation. The other project I'll point out there, it's fairly new, a lot of people don't know about this, but it's Cobra Dona, and it speaks well to our project. It's another Anglo gold project. Um, it's a copper gold uh, porphyry, uh, but most recently they drilled 850 meters of, or 800 meters, around 1.7 copper and 0.8 gold. The reason why this is very important for us is because it, it is for sale. Uh, Anglo is trying to focus on gold, and this is a potential project for sale. All the large mining companies, uh, base metal companies, have gone and visited this project. A uh, very large resource. The issue here is it's in the mountains and starts 400 meters below the surface, so you cannot open pit it. We're on the northern end of that belt, uh, but the key difference for us is uh, we're right near infrastructure and we're in rolling hills. So we're not in the mountains, literally top to bottom topography is about 150 meters. But 20 kilometers away from us is Cerro Matoso, which is BHP's largest uh, nickel mine and the third largest in the world. Open pit, been operating for 30 years, still has 30, 40 years of reserves. 10 kilometers away from us is two open pit coal mines. We're 10 kilometers away from the power grid. Uh, we got a major road artery uh, that feeds the trade with the Caribbean. This is a region you want to be in Colombia for open pit. You don't want to be in the mountains when you're trying to develop an open pit uh, deposit. Just to the north of Cerro Matoso, which is going to be very beneficial for this region as well, uh, there's a $450 million thermal coal plant being built. Uh, it's a joint venture with Colombia and Panama. So again, we're going to have power, we're going to have a workforce that is used to working at open pit mines. The communities here are in Puerto Libertor, and there's another community at Montelibro. They sustain themselves by working at Argos's coal mines and uh, BHP's uh, assets. In fact, uh, I was just at the BMO conference uh, um, this week, and I met the former uh, president of uh, uh, BHP Nickel. And he was telling me he is not at all surprised that there is copper gold in this region. BHP never explored, once they had their initial discovery, for minerals outside of the nickel. 
And the reason for that, back in the 90s, um, Colombia wasn't the safest, and it was really in the late 90s when you know, the paramilitaries laid down their arm that Colombia became safe. This region of Colombia is very safe. There is no FARC. We have no security issues, and a lot of that has to speak to all the infrastructure and the operations in this area. So this is where you really want to be in Colombia for open pit. So what caught our attention, as I said, we have a very powerful board and, and management team that's been involved in this. When we ran the magnetics in this area, we noticed very quickly before anybody else that there is a very large 13 kilometer potential trend. We did a lot of uh, stream settlement sampling. We've done a lot of soil sampling along this trend. We've actually identified three parallel uh, trends. On the eastern side is the porphyry trend. In the middle is a scarn. And on the uh, western side is the scarn probably coming off of porphyries as well. We've drilled the two prospects at the top northern part of this trend. And you can see we've got some fantastic drill results there, anywhere from you know, 1% uh, copper equivalent plus. Again, this is very early stage, but the key here is there is not many juniors out there that have been able to lock down a brand new discovery, 20,000 hectares, which is 200 square kilometers, all under one company. This is what the large companies are looking for. They're looking for district plays. We've got it. So there's nobody else here other than a small land package right in the middle. But it's very important to us because what it, that land package does and the, and the current company that owns it demonstrates that there's copper here. It's a private company. We've had a good look at it. There's probably around 50 million tons of copper, around 0.8% plus in a scar. Uh, it, it's open all to the north, to the south, to the east, to the west, all on onto our ground. But again, you really put this in perspective, three, three areas that have been drilled in this area all have high-grade copper. Again, this is just the beginning, and we own it all, other than that one small little land package. This is where we currently drilled at the northern end of uh, Montiel, where we hit a couple of really uh, impressive drill holes. This is right at surface, rolling hills. We hit 100 meters at 1% copper, 0.65 gold. We had 123 meters at 0.7 copper, 0.6 gold, and 200 meters of 0.4 copper and 0.3 gold. Again, these are all great holes, very early days here, but this is demonstrating to us in the market uh, that we really do have a, a district here. Again, think about it. You've had 50 million ounces of gold discovered in this Mikaka belt, but no one's ever stepped into this region of uh, Columbia. And this is where you want to be for open pit. And I'll keep, I'll keep saying that because everyone who's visited the site, we've had a lot of large mining companies come to site now because there are, they are curious where is their copper in Columbia. And we've now found it. They all said the same thing. This is where you have to be in Columbia for open pit. You can see in the uh, photograph here, the rolling hills. Uh, that little area to the eastern outcropping, that's where we saw the copper outcropping. One, one family's been mining basically an open pit for 30 years. Uh, we don't have any real uh, artisanal issues here because this is open pit type grades. You're not having people from all over the country trying to mine 30, 40, 50 gram uh, gold veins coming to surface. So we don't really have any artisanal issues here. In fact, the artisanals that are here, and there's a lot of alluvial miners all in this region, they've actually helped us find some of our targets because we follow where they're going and a lot of them will point it out to us. Anytime we have an issue where we need to do a trench or we need some work, we hire the family. They're more than happy to work for us because they make more money for, uh, working for us than they ever would in terms of mining these uh, pits. Costa Azul, which is two kilometers south of where uh, we had our first discovery holes. Again, uh, a couple of holes there, very early days, but 87 meters of 0.6 copper, 0.5. Put in perspective, most copper mines are 0.5% copper. So we're seeing that right at surface in copper, plus the gold that we're getting as a potential credit here. So again, we're getting some very high grade intercepts in the very first few holes that we're drilling in this district. We, I'm not sure if you've been following uh, Cordoba, but we just issued another news release uh, a couple of weeks ago. And over the last year, we've been doing a lot of work on the stream settlements. So basically, we're going through this whole district, you know, uh, inch by inch, trying to find and identify our various targets. What we've identified now is, as I said before, we have three parallel trends. Uh, within a couple of our trends, and I'm going to talk about the uh, Porphy trend, which is on the uh, eastern side. Uh, we found another trend with, uh, which starts at Costa Azul, which are those drill results I just mentioned. Three kilometer trend. At the bottom of that three kilometers, we found another all crop. It's a Gossen. For those of you that don't have geological background, it's basically eroded iron. And um, when we tested that, we got 4% copper. But more importantly, we also got light rare earths 
and uranium in the assays. And when you put that together, those are usually IOCG style deposits, iron oxide, copper, gold deposits. Those are some of your largest deposits in the world. So you start at the top three kilometers where we hit, you know, 1% plus copper equivalent to the bottom of the three kilometers. We got this big Gaussian that we've identified. Again, these are early days. We finally got the permit to start drilling now. Basically, we got mining titles for the bottom nine kilometers of our trend. So we haven't been able to drill uh, the bottom nine kilometers. We got that early part of this year. So now we're in a position to drill the rest of our trend. We still have $3 million in cash and treasury, so we don't need to go to the market uh, to raise additional cash here. So when we realized uh, that no one else knew there was copper gold in this district, we basically locked up another 200,000 hectares of ground before we issued any of our drill results. So we've got 20,000 hectares plus another 200,000 hectares. We picked up a very large land package north of Sierra Matoso. You can see that circular feature there. Um, we don't yet know what that is, but it looks really good from a geological perspective. The uh, former president of BHP Nichols said that is an interesting part because that is a volcanic belt. And the top part there is a coal belt. And those of you that also like oil and gas, there will be coal seam gas there and probably shale oil at the bottom as well. All right, uh, thank you very much. And I'm at my booth. Uh, please come by and uh, ask any questions you would like. Thanks.